is Alisa here or the Diamond Stitcher as I go by on YouTube and Instagram. Hello, good morning or good afternoon, whatever time of day it is for you. I hope it's been a wonderful one. If you are new to my channel, first off, welcome. I'm happy you found me and I hope you would consider subscribing and stick around for all things diamond painting. And if you are returning, thank you so, so much for your continued support. I am here for a whip and chat today with you guys. So I am going to be working on this kit. It's called Rainy Day by Hannah Lynn. I, when did I start this kit? I can't remember, but I've been working on it. Actually, did I start this? Sometime near the end of January, I started this, maybe early February, you guys. I can't remember. I don't have my logbook near me, but I've been working on this for uh, this month, and I would say I'm about halfway done, maybe a little bit over halfway. Uh, where I have the camera set up, uh, we can only see the part I'm working on, but yes, I am. Where am I? I can show you on this picture. I'm kind of in this area of her raincoat, so over her chest. That is what we are going to be filling in today while I chat. If you are new and you don't know what WIP stands for, it does stand for work in progress. And it refers to the diamond painting you or I are working on. So when I have a WIP and chat, I'm working on my one of my current WIPs, I should say. Sometimes I have a couple going and I'll alternate them. You can pull out your WIP, your work in progress, or you can treat this like a podcast and do some housework or do some errands while listening to it. Totally up to you how you would like to uh, partake. Don't forget, um, let me know how you guys are doing in the comments as well. I always talk about me, but I really do want to hear from you guys. I have created some amazing friendships uh, with many of you guys, and uh, I think about you guys on the daily. Certain people will pop into my head for, for you know, certain reasons, and... and uh, I do notice when you guys stop commenting and I often wonder and hope you are okay. So please, if you haven't checked in in a while, check in, let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're working on and what is going on in your life. Uh, what else do I want to share? I'm gonna put this actually up here. I am going to go over some of the stuff I'll be using in this video and then we will uncover, get some diamonds down. I also have a nice hot coffee here. Where is it there? Look, my cup even matches uh, my diamond painting, you guys. This is my second cup of coffee already. It is like, I don't know, just over 6.30 in the morning on a Monday and I am tired. I've been finding that my usual one cup of coffee does not work. I need at least two and uh, even then, sometimes it does not work. Anyways, let's see what I've got here. So when this, can I zoom out or am I already zoomed out? I can zoom out a bit, good. So, um. I'm trying to think. When this whip and chat goes up, I would have already posted my small shop haul. So if you haven't seen my recent small shop haul, check it out. I do share some of these new goodies that I purchased and I thought I would test some of them out in this whip and chat. So this is a, a new tray I got from a Canadian shop called Sleepy Puppy 3D. In terms of diamond painting trays, I really like a tray like this that is simple, it's basic. I don't really fuss with lids and stoppers, I just like the tray itself. This is probably a bit smaller than I typically would like. Now where did my other tray go? Gosh darn, let me grab the other one too. I uh, was working on my other whip uh, yesterday and I had that tray, <laughs> this tray, in that container of diamonds. This is my go-to tray. I always grab it. I always have it next to me. This is from Yellow Dog Designs and I really like the size of this tray. So just in comparison to the size, here is the difference between Yellow Dog Designs is the white one, Sleepy Puppy 3D is the purple one. And they, these are both considered large for these two shops, but you can see how much smaller the Sleepy Puppy one is. So uh, I'm gonna try and use it. I did play with it a little bit. It's also shorter in the sides. Let me show you here. And I tend to like a little bit of a taller side. It just prevents the diamonds from spilling out a little bit easier. I have a tendency to overfill my tray and then the diamonds just, you know, overfill on the edges. So we're gonna test this one out for a little bit. I also pulled out my purple pen. Let's see if it focuses. This pen is from Butterfly Effect Wears. I have many pens from them. I really like them. They are a USA small shop and they custom make all of their pen blanks and turn them in a variety of different styles. They have drops on Saturday afternoons and they have been in business longer than I've been diamond painting and still to this day their pens sell out in seconds. So they've created a very successful business for themselves and I thought this pen matched this tray really nicely. I've got my Diamond Art Club six placer in the tip here. 
These tips are awesome. I love them. They are considered a thin opening in terms of tips, and I really like how they work. I did put my bent single placer from Everlasting Tips. They are also a maker of metal tips. Their multi placers, though, are a bit wider in diameter, and I find them a little bit more um, a little bit more tricky to use. Uh, I really like the thin opening of these ones. And I want to show you what I have in this mini pen. So I always have a pen loaded with this wax. This is Pure Beeswax from Dream Wax Studio. They are a small shop in Canada and they make a diamond painting wax for diamond painting. This is just a natural beeswax. You can tell it's been well loved and uh, they also do carry scented varieties. I just love the smell of the natural beeswax. So that's usually what I go for. They do sell them in tins like this and they also have them in bars. Tins like this are great for your single placer. It's a little bit harder to load a multi placer. I usually have a bar to load my multi placer, but in this case it's only a six, so I am going to refill it. I thought I would save that for the video because I do know some people have, have uh, made comments that they find it hard to um, put in their pen tips. So for a single placer, all you have to do is scrape it. Let's see if I can lift it up enough. So all you have to do is scrape it and I kind of get a good scoop there and then what I do is I just push it down with my thumb. You want to make sure that it's filled completely to the top but that it's flat across the top otherwise you will uh, find that you have excess and that can come off on your drill. So I just push it down. That looks like it was enough. It was about half full and there that's good to go. Now my multi placer, I do have it already kind of half filled with the wax. What I do every time I sit down to diamond paint, I'll take the top layer off because often um, it will have some dust and debris from the diamonds on it and makes it a little bit less sticky. So I usually just use my nail and get the first layer off and then I will just um, top it up and I do use this tin. It's a little bit more tricky and you do the exact same thing I just bring it kind of like this. I wiggle and I shake it in now you can see that That focuses on either side. I have like a lump on each end So then what I do with my thumb or my finger I push it in and make it come like all the way across my pen tip and it is going to be hard because the autofocus is going to go in and out and I just keep wiggling it back and forth. I have another um, big clump on either side like that and then I just work it in with my thumb making sure that it is even all the way across this multi placer. It's a hard wax, but like I find the, at least the way my house temperature is, it's, it's still malleable. I can still uh, make it um, kind of go across my pen tip and, and it, it's not too hard. But if you live in a very cold climate, this kind of wax can get quite hard. And then I'm just putting any excess back in the tin. That looks pretty even, so there we go. Let me see if we can zoom in one more time. Come on, zoom in. So I make sure this tip too, it's flat across so there's no bumps and we are good to go. So I always have a pen like this off to the side and I use it with my ABs. Again, the wax is from Dream Wax Studio. It is a Canadian small shop. Now if you are in the States and you want something that is closer to home, uh, Wax that works similar to this is patty wax, but the super sticky version, not the regular wax. The regular wax I find leaves a lot of residue and I don't like it, it's too soft. But their super sticky version works very similar to this. So uh, I just buy from Dream Wax Studio now. Since they are Canadian, I can save on shipping that way, but I did used to use patty wax super sticky. And this gorgeous pen is from Creations Morin. Uh, Nick and Joni are the owners over there. They are a small shop based in Quebec and they recently turned this beautiful flower pen for me. The flower blank is from Flower Girl Blanks and then uh, Joni had purchased them and this is the one I chose. I love blanks with a bit of wood in it. I find that they look really nice. Again, I have my multi placer. This is probably an eight or a 10 multi placer again from Diamond Art Club. And I have Joni's putty in it, which I will show you in a minute. And then here is the single placer from Diamond Art Club as well. I actually did have to, um, this single placer didn't fit all the way down into the hole. I did have to shave off some of the resin. I do have a video on that. If you're finding your Diamond Art Club single placers aren't fitting all the way down into your pen, there is a um, hack that you can do 
to make them fit. So I do have a video on that. I will link it down below, but any kind of tips and tricks or how-to videos are always placed in my tips and tricks section of my channel. But it, essentially you just take an X-Acto knife and very carefully shave off some of the resin on the inside of the hole that the turner has drilled in there enough that it fits all the way down. And I am using Joni's Putty today and this scent is Jasmine. Again, this is from Creations Morin. They sent a nice size brick and their putty is not colored anymore. It's all white, which I like because if you accidentally get some putty on your diamond painting, like it sticks to the glue, it's not as noticeable as uh, if it's colored like crazy colors like pink and blue. So I actually like a putty that is white like this and the smell is not too strong. It's beautiful. And I've loaded up that flower pen, both the single and the multi-placer. Sometimes I put glue dots in my single placer. Sometimes I will put that Dream Wax Studio Wax, but lately I've decided to put putty and it's been working fine as long as you don't overfill it. Now, let me take a sip of coffee and let's uncover some space here and I will zoom in a little bit. It has been a few weeks now that I've had my new setup with my camera and my uh, new lighting. I hope you guys are liking it. So, so far the people that have commented have shared that they do like it. They appreciate the upgrade, uh, which I'm thankful for because it wasn't cheap, but uh, I like it. I like the setup better and I hope you guys do too. So where am I even going to start? Let's fill in the 310 first. So let me get that color. Now I will start with this little purple tray here and we will see how it works. My only concern is that it's it's kind of small for what I like doing, especially when you're working on filling in a color. But on first look, it does look like it lines up the diamonds pretty nicely. These three tens are not terrible. There are some tabs, which is why they're not all sitting perfectly down there, but they are super shiny. And yeah, the tray does line up the diamonds really nice. So that's a bonus. I actually did place another order and I wanted to try her silk filaments. Uh, I find that the silk filament, it's just a little bit more slippery and diamonds slip and slide a little bit easier. So I did want to compare. Uh, so that will be arriving and will be in a small shop haul at some point when I'm not quite sure, but it will be. Now let me figure out, because I never do this before I sit down, where did we leave off? I've been trying to keep track of it a little bit better because I've had a very busy schedule with a lot of medical appointments this month and I'm pretty up to date. I filmed my last one on the 17th. What day are we at? We're on the 26th now. So yes, I filmed my last weapon chat on February 17th. So on the 18th, I, oh my God, I woke up and I was so sore. On the 17th, I filmed a weapon chat and I also filmed an enhancement video. Now I do not have my light pad on, so it's gonna be a little bit harder for me to see, but um, hopefully that's okay for you guys. And what I might actually do, no, oh, I think I'll use this pen. I was just thinking out loud using the smaller pen, but I don't think I'm gonna hit the camera. I'm just thinking. I kinda of wanna pull you guys over a little bit, but then maybe that's better. What was I saying? I can't remember. Oh yeah. So yeah, on the Friday I filmed my last whooping chat and I did film my enhancement video going over the enhancements that I've made on this kit. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. I spend, I think, almost an hour going off over the various enhancements. And I also ask you guys some suggestions on some areas of this painting that I really want to change. I had put in another order with DP with sparklers and I'm just getting my trash pot ready. I um, have filled another order with DP with sparklers so I'm just waiting for those to arrive. I wanted to get a few more metallic colors as well as some, um, I think I got some more fairy dust colors and there were a few other things that I did purchase. I've also purchased from a Canadian small shop, the SNCL and DP. Sorry if I've mispronounced it. I, I'm Canadian, but I don't speak French. And uh, they are selling glitter dust, which essentially are fairy dust diamonds. 
And it's awesome to have a Canadian supplier because that cuts down on shipping and uh, customs and duty fees as well. So I did order those. I know a fellow community member, Kendra, has been sharing her progress on her current whip with me. And she is using both uh, fur, uh, what is it called? Pixie dust from DP with sparklers and glitter dust from the SNCL DP. And she's also ordered, I think, or Aloha calls them tiki dust. They're called all different names because Diamond Art Club is the one who actually was the first one to produce this fairy dust type diamond. So they have a, I don't know if patent is the right word, but they have, fairy dust is their trademark name. So every other shop that now supplies it has to change the name. And I think out of respect for each other, they've all tried to, to name it something different, but uh, I'm sure we're going to run out of words soon, but um, essentially they are the same thing. And according to Kendra, they all look like the same quality. So that's good. I will be happy. I did try and order some different colors from uh, the SNCL ADP and see about adding them into this kit. One of the big changes I want to make is, let me show you the picture again is the bushes so at the bottom here around the pond on the sides this is this is the color that they're supposed to be this is not my printer this is the charted color even on this side they're supposed to be like it's loaded with white fairy dust and then a very light green and a very kind of light brown i am not liking it i would like the bushes to be green similar to the mountains and the grass in the background so I am going to change it. I haven't made up my mind exactly how I'm going to, but it is going to involve probably some different fairy dust colors just to make it a little bit more sparkly. But I did also order, I believe, some regular DMC colors just in case I just wanted regular resin diamonds. But I'm excited to, to do that change and see that change. I'm hoping it looks good. I, I've seen the... Um, the finish from other people and I will try and post it on the screen if I still have that photo saved of what it looks like charted and I I just don't like it it's just a personal thing I I think it would look better with normal bush colors so I am going to enhance that so this painting is probably going to end up being the one painting I enhanced the most ever out of my uh, diamond painting career aside from Benedict Blue by Diamond Art Club which I also put a lot of special diamonds especially crystals in but this one is fun. This one, I have a little bit of everything and I'm really excited to see how it is going to look in the end. So far, this tray is okay. It would work well if you are filling in a color where you don't have a lot of and you don't need the tray to be, you know, completely full. Again, I have to be careful when... Um, Filling it, I don't overfill it, otherwise they do spill over the side. But this is a nice basic tray. It's made well, there's no imperfections on this specific tray. And uh, I am happy with it so much so, as I said, I did place a second order just to try out some other colors. Sometimes if I, like I said, I have a color in a section that there's not that many diamonds, I don't really want a huge tray to pour out just a few diamonds. So I, I tend to have a bigger tray and a smaller tray in reach when I'm working on my whip. Same, same like I have two different, two or three different pens with different uh, substances in them. But yeah, that, that filming on that Friday, it wore me out the entire weekend. I was flat on my back. I expected that ten, it tends to happen when I have a good day that the next day is just probably going to be bad because I probably overdid it. But um, honestly, without, I mean, I was going to say without sounding too depressing, I mean, I don't have a lot of good days. So when I have them, it's like a celebration. It's, it's a party. It's, it's, I get relief and it's just mentally, I need it so much. I need those days. I need the good days. I would love to have more of them. And I'm hoping in the future, like within the next six months, we have uh, more and more of them. I am in the middle of 
figuring out if we are doing more surgery or not. And I am hoping by the end of March, I have more answers as to what's next. Right now, we're kind of just in limbo waiting, trying to manage the pain as best as we can between appointments. Uh, part of it is we're just waiting for my diaphragm to heal. It was partially paralyzed as a complication of my surgery last year in April. And it can take up to a year to heal. Now, I'm just looking and seeing what I have written down in my little agenda. So yeah, after filming, I had like the next three days recovering from it. So I, I remember that I, I didn't do much. I didn't diamond paint much that weekend either. I just rested and watched, uh, binge watched TV programs and YouTube videos and caught up on some sleep. I find when I'm in a, a bad pain flare up, I... I find I'm more sleepy than usual. It's my body trying to repair itself, right? So if, if I'm very sleepy, I will allow myself to have a little afternoon nap. It prevents me from falling asleep at 6 o'clock in the evening because there are days I, I do. I fall asleep by like 6.30. The kids are still playing outside. I can hear them at the, the playground and the water park that we have near us. And I'm trying to fall asleep. So um, sometimes I find, you know what, the nap, it actually does help. <laughs> helps me last till about eight o'clock and then I'm still in bed too. But I've always been somebody who falls asleep early and wakes up early. Now, last week I um, actually did have some testing for my diaphragm. So I had a test on Wednesday called a sniff test or I think the medical word for it is like a fluoroscopy. Essentially, it's a big x-ray machine that I have to stand um, in front of, I guess. And it looks like something from a spaceship. It's pretty crazy. And then I um, have to breathe in in a few different ways. They instruct you what to do. So I have to like sniff like you're sniffing flowers, but you have to do it very quickly because that's the motion that will get that diaphragm moving. And then they also made me, you know, do some deep breaths and regular breaths. And they were just assessing the movement of the diaphragm. Now, I do not have the official report. I will... Find that out when I talk to my surgeon in March, but it looks like it's moving, you guys. It, I saw it, I saw it back when I had this test done last August, and I remember the diaphragm was not moving at all. It was completely like when you breathe in, if this is the diaphragm, my lungs are on the top part, and you know, your stomach and that is below. So this is the diaphragm. So when you breathe in, this diaphragm should go down like this to make the lungs expand more. It makes room for the lungs. But with me, what was happening was one side of my diaphragm was staying and the other one was moving. So this right side was paralyzed. It was not budging. But according to the test that I had last Wednesday, it looks like instead of kind of being here, it's kind of going down a little bit. Now it's not going down a lot. It's kind of just moving a little bit, but it's moving. Now the radiologist said she would have to sit down and compare it to last, uh, the last test in August and kind of come up with her final decision. But looking at it on the screen on that day, it does look like it's moving. So I'm crossing my fingers that her final report will say the same thing. And that's a good sign because we've been, we've been waiting for that to heal. And I know it can take up to a year or longer for the nerves to heal. They heal at a very, 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 very slow rate. And uh, yeah, like a year or two years. For the other kind of surgery I had for the nerves of my brachial plexus, those ones actually take up to two years or longer to fully heal. And I can confirm that that is true. <laughs> it really does take that long. But I'm happy that that diaphragm seems to be moving. When I saw the respirologist, she was pretty certain that it was still broken or paralyzed. But it does look like it's getting better. So uh, we're not even a year yet. Uh, in April, it would have been a year since the diaphragm was originally paralyzed. So that is a good sign. I am hoping that when she sits down and does her report, and when they compare the old test to the new test, I'm hoping that it's like... It's, it's significantly improved that perhaps we can proceed with another surgery. So uh, you might have heard me talk about this before, but my surgeon does want to try one more surgery on my left arm. He wants to go in. He wants to clean up all the scar tissue for a third time. And my problem is, is that my body just makes too much scar tissue. And 
what happens in the area where it is, which is in my upper arm around the, the bundle of nerves that control the arm, is the scar tissue acts like cement. It's literally like you would imagine if a cement truck poured cement in your body and it just went everywhere and it just cemented everything in place. So that's what the inside of my left arm and shoulder kind of area look like. So he, he wants, because I'm still very disabled from it and I experience daily severe pain still and dysfunction in the, the nerves are not working, they're getting worse. Um, I can do less and less and less. He thinks giving surgery one more shot is a good idea. So um, if he does go in and do another surgery, what he would do is clean out all of that scar tissue again. Now, that in itself will be super painful. The other kind of issue is every time you go into a surgical site and you clean up scar tissue, your body is just going to create more. Now the difference this time is he wants to wrap all of the important nerves in fat. And the theory is this fat will act like a barrier and any scar tissue that forms will connect or adhere to this fat instead of directly on the nerve. So it's like a protective blanket almost. And by uh, protecting the nerves like that, hopefully that scar tissue, well, it wouldn't be able to reach them. So that's a good thing, which hopefully means that those nerves would be able to do their job and not be impacted by scar tissue. Because right now, the scar tissue, it's affecting very important nerves that we have in that area, nerves that control my breathing. So my phrenic nerve, it is impacted. Uh, some days it is really bad and I can't breathe. I can't even get up to the bathroom without huffing and puffing like somebody who smoked for 50 years. And it's one of the more distressing signs I feel like in terms of pain. I've been in pain since 2018. It's been a while. I I it's part of me now even though some days it's really hard to to accept it and sit in it. it I I do cope with it a lot better than I used to. And uh, it's just part of me now. And it's the breathing, though, that is hard because it's impacting my ability to do anything, including just walking the dog. There are days where I have to use a power wheelchair because there's no way I can make it around the block without huffing and puffing and feeling like I'm going to pass out. My oxygen levels on those kind of days will also be in the low range. So um, it's preventing me from, from exercising. And I used to be an exercise junkie. I would always be at the gym. If I wasn't working, I was at the gym. In my lifetime, I my weight has yo-yoed like most women, I think. But at one point, I lost 60 pounds. And uh, I was feeling really good, unfortunately. With all of the problems I've had since 2018, I have gained some, if not all, of that weight back. And I'm trying to lose it again. But it's really hard when you cannot be active because your lungs just don't work. You can't breathe. It's a really tough feeling to feel like you're suffocating and try to walk on a treadmill or ride a bike. Like, your brain is telling you not to do it. Even walking the dog, like I said, I have to use a walker at all times because I will get kind of dizzy and passy outy. I'll see black stars and I, I can't breathe and I need to sit and catch my breath. So I do have to use the walker, but there have been days where I can't even, that's not even good enough. I need a wheelchair. So if the possibility is there that he can go in, wrap all of these nerves in fat after taking out all of the trouble scar tissue, and I could perhaps breathe a little bit easier the rest of my life. I I personally want to take that risk, that chance. And I say risk because any kind of surgery, of course, there are risks that you'll you'll wake up worse off than you were. I mean, last time I woke up, I had a paralyzed diaphragm, right? Thankfully, it looks like it's finally healing, but there there are risks to surgery. Also, like I said, when you go back in and do surgery in the same area, you 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 risk even more scar tissue developing. Because that area is just very angry and the more times you go in there to disrupt it, the angrier it gets. So um, last time I talked to my surgeon, which I think was in January or maybe December, he said he still wanted to wait for that diaphragm to heal, but he, he still thinks that going in and doing that other surgery would benefit me. So if if he's still in the same frame of mind, it would it's worth the risk, it's worth the chance. I don't think I can get any worse than I am. I mean, I've, I've survived a paralyzed diaphragm. Well, it's difficult. Uh, 
and the pain that I still get is very severe. I've just, I think, learned almost to dissociate from it and block it out. Uh, plus all of the injections I get and the medications I receive and procedures and such all do help take the edge off the pain. Um, I think especially if clearing out all that scar tissue would make my breathing easier and, and the chance it might even make the pain less, then I, I, I am ready to take the risk. I know some people have a harder time deciding on surgery, but I trust the surgeon I'm hands that I'm in. He is very good. He is considered the Canadian top doctor for this condition. Um, there's a lot more research about it in America and you guys have like a handful or more of top doctors for this condition. Unfortunately in Canada we don't. Uh, some, some provinces still don't even recognize this condition as a real condition. They make people think it's in their heads which I can assure you very much so it is not. Um, so yeah, I, I, I trust him. I'm just, I've been frustrated because we've been waiting, waiting for this diaphragm to heal. And it's like, now it's, it's possibly moving again. This is a good sign. Do we are, like, maybe I have a feeling he's going to say it's still not healed enough and he's going to make me wait even longer. But I honestly just want him to go in and do it. I mean, we're prolonging the inevitable. I'm suffering and, um, i am also actually recently been approved for something called the spinal cord stimulator, which I've talked about before, which is a chronic pain device that delivers um, uh, signals to the spinal cord at the levels where the pain originates and helps block those pain signals from the brain. We think that it will really help me. They think I'm a good candidate for the type of pain I have. Also, my mindset plays a big part in it. I know that I will never, ever be pain-free. I'm always going to be in some level of pain, and I'm going to have days of moderate to severe pain. But um, if this little device can even take it down by 10%, that's a win in my books. Um, I, I respond really well to kind of vibration therapy. Like I use a massage gun and the vibrations it sends, if I do it long enough, it, it does help block those pain signals and, I, and I, I can rest and have very, very low pain after. So I'm a good candidate and that's what I've been waiting for. But that surgeon doesn't want to put it in until I've gotten all of this scar tissue taken care of. If we're doing surgery, that is, or she wants, basically she wants the yes or no from my vascular surgeon as to whether we're doing surgery or not. Because with the spinal cord stimulator, you kind of have one chance to get it right. And if we get it right, we don't want anything to disrupt that because the chance of getting it right a second time is very low. So I'm excited to try that procedure, but it's been delayed because my potential one more surgery on my left side. So I am praying that when I speak to the doctor, when do I speak to him? Let's see. March. Did I even write my March dates in? I don't think I did. I think it's March 1st that I talked to my surgeon again. So if you pray, can you pray that he has the answers he needs by that day? I would love to leave that conversation with a plan because the last year I've had no plans, but just tough it out and wait. So I am praying and praying and praying that that day he has all of the information he needs. I also had that MRI recently that I had the anaphylactic reaction to, but hopefully he has that MRI report and it gives him whatever answers he was looking for. I also had last week on Friday, I had breathing tests done. So I had to go to a respiratory lab and they were testing basically my lung capacity to see what it is like. Um, because I still do have a partially paralyzed diaphragm to some degree. And the respirologist believes on the other side it's also not working right. So she wanted to send me for breathing tests to see where I am at. Because I do complain of so much shortness of breath. And it really does impact my uh, daily life. So I went for those tests. And thankfully I was able to do them. It did cause a massive flare up as expected. Because you have to breathe in really deep. And... When I breathe in too deep, it really, something happens on my left neck where um, I don't, it almost feels a little bit like a lung hernia up there. The, when I take a deep breath and, and when I blow out, it just, something pops up there and it puts a lot of pressure on 
the nerves up there and it's really painful. So I did have some trouble with that, but I was able to do do a good enough job that they said that they got their answers. Of course, they wouldn't say anything more than that. And I don't work, I'm not a respiratory nurse, so I don't know um, all of the numbers and the values and, and, and stuff. So I have to wait until hopefully my surgeon gets a copy of that. I'm going to call them the day before and make sure that their, his unit clerk or his um, MOA can make sure all of those reports are in so he has all of the data. And I pray that he can, he can give me a little bit more than a maybe. That would be really nice. I am somebody who usually likes planning. I like to know plan A, plan B, and plan C, and I like to prepare for all of them. I feel like because when you're really sick with all of these different health problems, there is so much out of your control that, you know, having plans kind of gives me back some of that control. Um, if you've been through it yourself, you know, it just, it just helps. It helps the waiting game of not knowing and waiting. And, you know, when my mind starts to worry about the future, I can remind myself, you know, this is plan A. And if that doesn't work, we have a plan B and C. There's, there's options, right? There's, there's still options. We are not completely hopeless. So fingers crossed, we learn more. I also got uh, some more injections last week. I get uh, something called trigger point injections every six weeks where they inject bupivacaine and lidocaine into all of my problem muscles in my neck and my um, shoulders and my chest. They really do help, but this time it did send me into an awful flare. So even today, speaking with you guys here today, I yesterday was a really bad day. I was in 10 out of 10 pain. Uh, I contemplated going to the hospital, but I know they can't do much for me. And I do, I do kind of have a step ladder of, you know, medications that take the, I, I take this first. And if it's still bad, then I take the next thing. And if it's still bad, then I take one more thing. And the, the final thing is usually what knocks it out along with resting and, and a hot, hot bath just to help the um, muscles to uh, relax. So that did bring the pain from severe to tolerable. And then yesterday afternoon, I, I diamond painted my other whip and I got some good progress done on that. So I have thought about doing a video where I kind of share my journey with living in chronic pain and how I cope with it. I get a lot of people sending me messages or leaving comments that they're amazed at my strength and my resilience. And they don't understand how I get through every day with such a positive attitude. I have my bad days, you guys. I, I, I actually don't call them bad days anymore. I actually call them bad moments because when, when you think of bad days, it's just if I thought that way, then every day would be bad and, and you've, you can go to a very hopeless state very, very quickly. But I changed my thinking to good days with bad moments. So um, to be honest, most days have at least one bad moment. And when I talk about bad moments, it's usually centered around pain or disability or breathing. But um, yeah, I do have a lot of tips that I can share with people. I know a lot of you have shared that you also deal with some chronic pain and chronic conditions. And um, I know it can be very frustrating, especially when you don't have a diagnosis and when all of the imaging comes back normal, but you're still in pain and the doctors don't really know what to do. Um, there are some great chronic pain programs I recommend. And uh, I recommend looking in your state or your province for chronic pain clinics. They're, they're, Part of dealing with chronic pain is fixing the mindset, and um, that might seem silly, but, but it is true. I can speak from experience. The way that we think and the way that we frame our thoughts can totally impact the pain we feel, same as with anxiety and depression. The way we frame things can totally change, change how our day goes. So I've been thinking of creating... I don't know if I want to call it a series, but some videos on maybe how I've dealt with obviously the chronic pain, but also how I've got through depression and anxiety because I still do have bad days with anxiety and lately it's been really bad and I think it's because I'm kind of, one, the last two months have been full of medical appointments, I'm exhausted, and two, I don't have answers yet. So there's that worry about what if and 
you know, what if I can't have surgery? And what if I, I can't have this? And what if this doesn't work? And when I find myself thinking all those thoughts, I find my anxiety is much worse. But if I reframe my thoughts, it's much better. So I've been thinking of doing a specific video series on that because I know not everybody um, deals with chronic conditions like that. So maybe it wouldn't be useful. But to be honest, I think the tips that I would have to share with everybody would help a lot of people. Even if you don't have diagnosed anxiety or depression or chronic pain, I still think um, the tips that I've learned and the tips that I can share would help other people just in their day-to-day -day life as well. So let me know if you're interested in that. I'm just chuckling here as I take a sip of co coffee. Even if you're not interested, I probably will do it because my motto is if, if, if it helps one person, then that's enough for me. Because when I was in the depths of my despair and my my conditions and my surgeries and fighting insurance companies and and all of the fights I've had to go through. Um, I had some pretty dark days where um, living was not appealable to me anymore. So I've been that dark. I've been that deep multiple times, but I've survived. And I've always thought, you know, sharing my story, maybe maybe it would help other people. And I find too, in helping others, it helps me because, you know, when you do live with, with hard things, like life can get pretty depressing sometimes, you know. I mean, my life as a 30-year-old is very different than, you know, other 30-year-olds. I live a very different way. And sometimes if I ruminate on that and what I am missing out on, like motherhood or, you know, buying a home and starting a family and, you know, advancing in the workplace even, for example. I can't fixate on that stuff too much or it does get overwhelming. But, um, yeah, I do have lots of tips. So perhaps in another video I will go over that. I would probably sit down and make some notes just to plan it out a little bit better. The way my brain works is kind of a little bit kind of jumps all over the place which can be hard to follow, and I would want it to, to be almost like a, a help guide. So, yeah, I, I've been thinking of doing that for quite a while, actually. I just, I just, I got sicker in January, like, I, and busier, and it just fell to the wayside. So, perhaps soon I can start doing that. Now, I know I'm kind of not in frame. I'll go up here. Now, what else happened last week? I told you I had the injections. Yeah, those ones really made me sick, but... I think uh, today, uh, this morning so far, it's not so bad. Yesterday was a really bad day, and I find after that really bad day, usually it turns a corner and it starts to get better. This is how many days? One, two, three. Yeah, yesterday was the third day post-injections, and I find up to 72 hours. If you're going to have a flare-up, it, it, the first 72 hours are the worst. So hopefully I'm turning the edge. I do have a busy week ahead of me here. Not really in terms of tests, but in terms of uh, videos that I think I have planned going up. I'm filming this on a Monday, so uh, I would have put up my March diamond pinning event video. I want to do that every month, uh, at the end of every month for the next month, just go over some of the events um, that are going on and maybe some that I would recommend that I know of, that I've participated in, that I know are good. Not all events are the same. They, they are run very differently. Some have prizes, some don't. Some require a, a new start, some don't. Like there's lots of different, different types of events out there. So um, also to increase my knowledge of what events are going on, because sometimes I do get people asking me or in my Facebook group, you know, what events are going on. So I do plan to do that every month. I have the March one out now. And what else? I can't remember what videos I have going up. I have some video going up on Wednesday. Of course, all of these videos will go up. This one's probably not going to go up till next week because I also have a sneak peek coming this week. And then I'm really enjoying doing those Friday Diamond Art Club roundups. I know you guys have enjoyed them too. So I, I do plan to do them every week, even if it's a bad week. I plan to do it in some capacity. This past week I did it, just my voice without my face. That way I didn't have to worry about making myself presentable and if I had to stop and you know cry out in pain I could do that and <laughs> continue filming so um yeah either faceless or uh with a face I will plan to do those every Friday afternoon 
Um, I may see if I can uh, get some of the information a little bit sooner so I have a little bit more time to plan the edit. But usually I'm still adding little bits and pieces of edits in um, Friday afternoon. And then I'm, I'm not supposed to post it until the final image has been previewed by Diamond Art Club for the week, just out of respect to them. Again, I have mentioned before, they did give me permission to make these roundup videos, and uh, which I'm very grateful for. So um, yeah, that's why it doesn't go up earlier, because I need to wait for the final preview in order to, so people, you know, hear from Diamond Art Club first what releases are coming out. And then the goal is to get it up within an hour. It just depends. Usually it depends how much editing I have to do after that final image gets revealed. And then also uh, how long it takes the video to upload. I usually use my husband's computer, which is like 2000 times faster than my laptop. So I'm very grateful for that. But um, every Friday afternoon that will go up until I say otherwise. And I do post a link to that in the Facebook group, but you can sign up for uh, notifications on YouTube to be notified when I do post those videos so that um, it just gives you an automatic um, reminder or notification. As far as appointments next week, I do have, or I should say this week, because this video is probably going up on the 20, no, yeah, last week. I'll be going for a massage. I haven't decided if I'm going to cancel that or not. Sometimes it makes me worse. And then I'm finally going to get my crown put on my tooth. I've had a tooth that chipped in January that they've been having to fix over like three appointments. So the final appointment is this week. Hopefully it's over and done and I don't need freezing for it, I don't think. Maybe I do. I don't know. I hope not. If you haven't heard, um, dental freezing and I do not get along. So uh, I'll update on that when that happens. Then what else do I have going on? I haven't filled out my March calendar yet, so I, I can't update you on what's further. But in March, I do have a follow-up with my surgeon. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we get some answers next month. And as well as answers on those breathing tests, just to see how impaired my breathing is with that paralyzed diaphragm and also how healed it is. And um, yeah. So if you do pray, pray for the good things, pray for that diaphragm to keep healing, pray for the surgeon to have answers, <laughs> to have all the information he needs to at least tell me like, yeah, how about we do surgery in six months? I can deal with that because then there's like a plan, right? Then, then I think my anxiety would actually calm down a lot as well. Don't forget you guys to let me know how you're doing down below. Let me know which whip you are working on. Let me know all of the things and yeah, the usual. If you've made it to the end and you're not yet subscribed, you will probably like it here. So don't forget to hit subscribe. You can click that notification bell to be notified when I do post new videos. Also click that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel. And don't forget to share with friends, family, anyone who you think might take value out of the, my content. And until the next one, happy diamond painting, you guys. Bye.